welcome friends to the OHA YouTube video channel. I'll be your channel host OHA George and this is the very first installment of the OHA workshop. Today we're going to be discussing uh, Hearst Arts molds as well as the plaster I use in creating uh, the various um, structures that you've all seen. Now a little disclaimer, I don't work for Bruce, uh, Bruce Hurst, and neither am I endorsed by him. I just love uh, using his product. I feel that his product complements my style of creativity in uh, creating the uh, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, and Middle Earth universe. So without further ado, let's get right to it. For you, you will note uh, some of the Hearst Arts molds that I've laid out. Uh, this one here is uh, floor tile number 203. I've had this uh, particular mold now since uh, 2003 and let me just go and show you here there's no signs of wear and tear at all whatsoever um, Bruce has produced an excellent excellent product uh, made of a high quality rubber silicone um, when you're storing these for a long period of time um, recommended is some sort of uh, baby powder or talc powder uh, to keep the mold uh, nice and fresh for your next time and then when you're ready to mold just rinse out the baby powder and you should be good for casting. Um, it is also uh, to be noted that when you are creating something specific that you're going to be casting the same mold many times so you know 30 40 times depending upon what it is that you're doing um, what I like to do is have some sort of a container there indicate the number of the mold on the container so you can store all of your spare pieces so if you want to create something else going forward um, it'll be easy for you to track down and see what you have and then just cast what you're missing okay so in addition to that what you will need for casting is some sort of a container to mix your 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 plaster in I like to use a tongue depressor um, I buy these at a craft store or a hobby store either or um, up to you, I like to use uh, latex-free uh, gloves um, whenever I hobby, whether I'm painting, airbrushing, or even doing, you know, terrain projects. It just uh, puts me in that uh, mindset. You will need um, either distilled water or tap water. It'll, it'll work great for you. And you will also need some sort of uh, plastic container to transfer the uh, dry plaster into your not recommended but I mean it just saves uh, saves you time all right so I will take you off the tripod and bring you into the um, casting room it might be a little loud in there because it is my furnace area so uh, hopefully that's not too displeasing to your ears okay we'll be back shortly this um, looks like any other plaster the only difference is it has 16,000 psi uh, which is very very strong I mean I've used Merlin's magic before the dental plaster this is like a tip uh, like a high quality uh, gypsum um, it dries rather quickly um, I pick it up at a pottery uh, location or a pottery distributor rather uh, out here in uh, Toronto um, so I, just, I don't follow the packaging instructions I just go I fill the cup maybe halfway and then I just go ahead and I pour it into my, my mixing container. So this is uh, called dry stone. Um, so as you can see. Now what I do is I'll add a little bit of water and I eyeball. So I'll mix it. Basically what I want to do here is show you the consistency that I'm looking for. I want it rather thick I don't want it I don't want it very uh, creamy if that makes any sense to you so just bear with me as I mix it just so that I can show you the consistency that works best for this terrain so you just keep mixing it and stirring it until you don't feel it clumpy and right now there you go so you see it's still rather thick even though it pours now I've been <laughs> I've been using this formula now as I said earlier uh, for the last 15 years this plaster has never failed me um, 
I know this is a little boring now for you watching me stir this plaster but uh, at least it gives you a good good indication as to you know how thick it needs to be so okay what I will do now is I will transfer you over to the other side while I start to pour this into the molds all right hopefully you all can see this so I have three molds here in front of me um, just clean out your tongue depressor stick uh, in addition to the uh, items that you will require. You will need a four inch uh, spatula. You will need uh, some sort of cleaning instrument. In this case I have a paper towel. And something else that's not um, really necessary but I felt uh, it works for me is a piece of plaster because this stuff here kind of it does get messy when you clean out your mold. Uh, so this prevents everything from getting all over the place. So you have your mixture here. Go ahead and what I like to do is just pour a little bit in the center. Now move it into the next one. I apologize if there's a shadow. Not ideal filming conditions here. <laughs> so now what I like to do is take the spatula and just try to fill it out. You are going to have some seeping out. It's to be expected. one this one here I didn't pour as much so I'm able to manipulate the access and try to fill in the holes you can add you know pick up some other balance and just pour it in there So this way we don't have as much wastage and we have a little left and we can go ahead and do the third mold. And that's it guys. So this particular plaster as I said has a um, has a PSI content of 16,000 which in comparison to the Paris of Plaster, Paris of Plaster only has I believe it's 2,500 or just under 3,000 PSI. Um, which feels rather flaky, especially for um, wargaming terrain. Uh, they're very brittle. Uh, not to say that this will not break should you drop it, you know, five feet from the ground, but it's going to break maybe in two pieces. In comparison to plaster parish, you will have a hundred pieces. Uh, so this is much more manageable to repair as well. Uh, the way that I have this uh, stirred right now and, and combined, it will set in a half hour and we can come back and we can demold it and uh, show you how everything looks from that point on. As we're back, it's been uh, 45 minutes approximately and uh, I just came down and I demolded the uh, first uh, mold. As you can see, this is a relatively thin uh, mold. Um, so it's designed so that you can go back to back and increase the height to make various types of structures. So this is the stucco um, mold. I don't know if you can see it. The lighting here is not ideal. Um, and then let's have a look at the uh, the tile. So you can see the tile mold is quite thick. And well, if you see the detail, it's very crisp. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and demold uh the rest of them and then i'll bring you back on the bench and then we can go over into our conclusion we're back so all in all that's it in a nutshell and again thank you for tuning in to this very first episode of the oha workshop this was an introduction to um her starts molds a product i use how i use it how i mix it uh join me next time where i will be showing you how to construct almond hen uh with her starts molds so thank you for uh, joining me uh, please like share and subscribe to our fellowship and uh, look forward to seeing you all again soon